analog scrolling is an increasingly widespread web design trend and it brings a certain dynamic into your website. In this video, we will learn how we can create a parallax scrolling effect with Next.js, Tailwind CSS and GSAP. GSAP is a JavaScript toolset that turns developers into animation superheroes. With GSAP, you can build high-performance animations that work in every major browser. You can animate CSS, Canvas, React, Vue, WebGL, color strings, motion paths, generic object, anything JavaScript can touch really. If we take a look at GSAP Showcase, we will see that there are so many different examples and so many different things that we can do with GSAP. If you need inspiration, just make sure you check the showcase and you will find so many different ideas for your website. If we take a look, for example, at this specific website, which got created uh, with GSAP, you will see how many different animations have been added to the website just by using um, GSAP and it just makes the design look so unique and, and different. For this video, we will use Next.js and Tailwind CSS. I will assume that you already know how to set it up, but if not, it is really straightforward. I will just leave the links on the description below and if you follow the instructions, in a few minutes you will be ready to go. But if you would like to clone the project, you can find a link on the description below with a GitHub repo and you can clone the project from there. Once we finish um, setting up our Next.js project with uh, Tailwind CSS and GSAP, we are ready to go and take a look and see what our starting point is. So I do have here the basic sections, the three sections, the top one, the middle one where we will have the scrolling effect and the, the last one. Now here I have added the, as you can see, I have the horizontal gallery component and I have all the sections and the images and I have centered them all. Uh, that's why it looks like it's just one picture, but basically um, they all in the center and one is hiding behind the other. Uh, so this is the horizontal gallery component. And if we go and take a look at the index.js component, I do have um, three sections. Uh, I do have the the top one. Um, the I have imported the horizontal gallery component. And then I do have the last one as well. Now, the next thing we need to do, we just need to go and add the refs inside each section, just so we can use them later to actually create the effect. And also we need to add um, a ref inside the wrapper div. Of course, we need to import GSAP, the scroll trigger, because we will just use it uh, and the use effect and use ref from React, because we will use the use effect in order to create the animation. We need to register the GSAP plugin, the, actually the scroll trigger. Inside our wrapper div as well, we will need to add our width. In this case, I do have four sections and for that reason, I have added 400 view width. Now, the next thing that we need to do, we just need to use use ref for our scroller. So basically for our wrapper div and for our sections. And then the next thing we need to do is we just need to use the use effect. And this is where we will create our animation. So let's just go step by step and see what this animation does. And the first thing we need to do inside our use effect is to select all the sections with a class of skill set. So inside the section class name, uh, I've added the skill set class. And by doing that, we can select all the sections and add them to an array. And then we set the X percent, uh, which is percent based translate X to minus 100 times skill set don't length minus one skill set don't length in this case is four. We choose to have is none. There are so many um, different type of types of easing you can choose. Um, 
it always it depends the effect that you would like to create we could we could have back we could have bounce or any type of e so for example this is the non um, if we go power three is this one we could have steps and um, there are so many different types uh, it's just always depends the effect that you would like to create really um, and then we go to the scroll trigger so we select as a trigger the section the div in this case that we would like to trigger um, and this is uh, where we added the ref equals to scroller and this is the wrapper div so we actually select this div here so that means that when we enter this div it won't move up or down until the um the scrolling the horizontal scrolling has finished or the animation any type of animation so we trigger scroller.current we set markers to false we can set um, we can set markers to true as well so if we set markers to to true what will happen we will just have some markers that will show us when the uh, animation start ends and this is really helpful when you're designing the animation when you're creating the animation to have an idea uh, whether you are at the beginning of the animation at the end and just adjust it accordingly of course once you finish you just set it back to to false then we set the pin to true which means that we want to pin this scroller um div uh, that we want to trigger we do have pin spacing to true here so if you see if we scroll here we just go to the next section so if i set this to false and i just refresh you will see that when i scroll down you see this end it actually overlap with the other div so by setting it here to true we avoiding having um this problem and we do have a scrub equals to one so scrub is the amount of time in seconds that the playhead should take to catch up so scrub for example 0 0.5 would cause the animation playhead to take 0 0.5 seconds to catch up with the scroll bar position in general it is great for smoothing things out we do have invalidate on refresh true and we do have anticipate pin one so if we pin large sections we might notice what looks like a slight delay in pinning when we scroll quickly that's caused by the fact that most modern browsers handle scroll repaints on a separate thread so at the moment of pinning the browser might have already painted the pre-pinned content making it visible for perhaps few milliseconds the only way to deal with that is to have scroll trigger monitor the scroll velocity and anticipate the pin, applying it slightly early to avoid that flash of unpinned content. A value of anticipate pin 1 is typically fine, but you can reduce or increase the number to control how early it does the pinning. In many cases, however, we might don't need any anticipate pin, and in this case, the default will be 1. And we do have snap equals to 1 divided by skill set length, which is 4 minus 1. So snap allows us to snap to certain progress values between 0 and 1 after the user stops scrolling. So if, for example, I just scroll here and stop, it will just take me to the next section. And again, if I scroll opposite now and stop, it will just take me to the previous um, section. And then we just set the end uh, to be equals with the uh, width of the viewport, which is window inter width, really. The last thing that we need to do is, if you notice here, we do have um, a scroll bar. In order to avoid that, we just go to the index file and we just do the overflow. We set the overflow um, hidden or we can do overflow x hidden. And this will just hide um, the uh, bottom scroll bar. And we do have snap equals to 1 divided by skill set length, which is 4 minus 1. So snap allows us to snap to certain progress values between 0 and 1 after the user stops scrolling. So if, for example, I just scroll here and stop, it will just take me to the next section. And again, if I scroll opposite now and stop, it will just take me to the previous um, section. 
and then we just set the end uh, to be equals with the uh, width of the viewport which is window enter width really the last thing that we need to do is if you notice here we do have um, a scroll bar in order to avoid that we just go to the index file and we just do the overflow we set the overflow um, hidden or we can do overflow x hidden and this will just hide um, the uh, bottom scroll bar so this is it for this video guys i really hope you found this helpful and if you have any questions uh, just leave a comment and i will get back to you uh, as soon as i can also you can leave a comment for any uh, recommendations or any ideas for upcoming videos uh, that you would like me to create also if you like the video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you to the next one